Thanks very much, Mark. Yes, uh, you're taking a look at uh, the, the horse. I, I suppose many would have thought might be a favourite uh, tonight, and that is El Hebri, who obviously brings respectable form to the table. I think his, his debut on balance was a better effort. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the horses surrounding him in terms of ratings, he's, he's got quite a, a relaxed walk. Even still looks like he's he's carrying a bit of condition, actually. he's He might just be that kind of horse. First time I've seen him in the flesh. But no doubt, in terms of form, I think his debut performance was better. Uh, he was surrounded by... Uh, some talented horses. There's a Stanmore winner who's gone on to place in Group 3 company. Second rated 78, was fifth in a glorious Goodwood handicap. Uh, Sir Henry Cotton, the, the fourth horse in behind him, is rated in the 90s now. So there were some good horses there. Compare that to the fifth horse last time on soft grounds at Haydock, rated in the uh, 60s. So I think he, he encountered better horses and he ran a better race first uh, time up. Obviously a different surface tonight to encounter as well, but uh, clearly he is among the top two, El Hibri. And I think it all depends what uh, Tamra's Rock is going to bring to the uh, table. And Tamra's Rock is just over there, wearing the red hood. We'll try and pick out. Last couple coming in, and was 11 and 8 to the paddock. Um, he's actually behind um, El Hibri. Uh, he's two horses behind him tonight in the red hood, and that is Tamras Rock, who ran here a couple of starts ago. You might just be able to follow him briefly as he's going to be mounted down the walkway. Ross Ryan has gone bored for the first time. He's essentially got a miler's pedigree, uh, Tamras Rock. He's been gelded likewise. It's on a fascinating rock. And he ran really well here first time up. He was was just in behind the pace. He, he looked like through the, the early stages of that race that he was he was raw and on and off the bridle. And and then he was quite taking in the latter stages, second half of the race where he was doing most of his better work. So it looked like he was learning as he, he went along. He had a, a good draw last time in stall two. He's got stall two once again. And he was behind an 83 horse on that occasion and the fourth horse rated 77. So he's probably not far off the form of uh, El Pebri already, with obviously one less run and the promise of more to come and a slightly better draw. So in interesting that they've, they've taken the hood off him, so clearly they feel he's learnt plenty. Now, we'll take a look at number five, because that's an interesting newcomer, Axopar. Um, of James Ferguson's good strike rate, the team as well. The five winners so far for 14 two year old runners. Uh, so the strike rate is good, and this uh, son of helmet you can see uh, very, very powerfully built, isn't he? Strong back end, he's quite chunky and muscular. Uh, Axopar, uh, he has. I got essentially, I think, a seven furlong, maybe a, a mile pedigree. His grandmother was a miler, and the dam was placed over at seven furlongs. And the grandmother actually was a, a pattern race miler too, so interesting to see how he gets on and, and what the market's doing with him with uh, Danny Musket getting up for the ride. Danny Musket's got um, there's some good connections, isn't he? He rides uh, two-year-olds for Kevin Philippa Defoy as well and they've had some first-time uppers and the Ferguson strike rate is excellent. As the last one or two leaving the paddock. Great to see people on track here. There's plenty of come tonight uh, Kempton Park. And we will pick one or two of the others up at the start. Uh, ben James has got a newcomer here. Michelle Cook just had a winner of the previous race and she's got a Petite Joe who we will try and show you perhaps down at the start. Uh, reel him in, just getting slightly on his toes. Adam Kirby on him now with his legs out of the irons. Uh, he didn't show much first time up, but he's one of the, the last going down the, the walkway. And that includes some um, justice protocol as well for Ishmael Mohammed. Uh, relatively cheap purchased this horse from the, the Goff's yearling sales. Uh, Ishmael Mohammed's got uh, two winners from 16 among his two-year-olds uh, so far this season. But the Yard are in really good nick, aren't they, with Zane Claudette and, and also a uh, good off office has been in good nick as, as well. Nibra's gold just got touched off, I think, earlier on today at Bath. So they're leaving the paddock. So are the owners and guests, and we'll pick them up down at the start take another check on the market 
Tamara's Rock now goes to odds on once again, 11 to 10 on. 2 to 1 at El Hibri. Price probably just too big now has been clicked in. 13 to 2 Axapa, 16 to 1 for Almodovar del Rio, 25 to 1 here at the track, 25 to 1 as well, Petit Joe, 25 to 133s for Fast Dancers, and 40 to 1 bar those. So we've got a lot of newcomers, we've got a lot of horses here who are horses who've run on turf and haven't yet run on the all weather. Tamra's Rock will start off with, it is the odds on favourite. He was very well back earlier on. I didn't think he was necessarily the most physically imposing horse. And he finished third here at Kempton on his debut, Rachel. Yeah, he did actually finish third in a, arguably a, a better race than this. That was technically an open contest. This is uh, for horses banded B, C and D. So arguably this is a grade drop. He got beaten by Noisy Knight, really good two-year-old of Roger Tarleton, who was a previous winner. Blueberry Hill, really good in second. Well-bred John Gosden, debutant, and and uh, he finished a really nice third sitting up at the pace, and it was great. He got squeezed up and had to switch one furlong out. He would have finished closer had he not. Interesting that they are taking the hood off, obviously in the race, because he's got the red mm. hood on down at the start. I thought he was the most likely horse to take the bigger step forward on the form book over El Hibri, who has slowly been taking steps forward on softish ground for six furlongs seven furlongs and now we stay at seven but we're trying the all weather and actually the way that he's been running it sort of looked to me that he'd probably want a little bit better ground albeit the first race the ground looked quite deep here so that might be a more good to soft side of turf it did it did look quite deep today at Kempton obviously it was renovated and uh, uh, a few weeks ago a couple of weeks ago and um, they certainly did seem to be going in um, today in that opening race. Of the others, in particular the, uh, the bunch of, of newcomers uh, that are in this field, did anything catch your eye on paper? On paper, yeah. Um, as Amor de Bordeaux Rio, I think second favourite of the debutantes is just giving Stefano Churchy a little bit of a, a fun ride down at the start. Actually, let's just go straight in. The eight horse justice protocol for Ismail Mohammed, 66 to 1. This one's the one that jumps off the page. £7,000 as a yearling. The dam's a winner. She's dropped seven winners. Five of them have been all-weather winners. Three of them have been two-year-old winners. He's the half to Miami Joy, who Ismail Mohammed trains, who we will see in about an hour and a half's time on tonight's card. She's a, she was a three-times two-year-old all-weather winner. More important, one on debut over course and distance. Half to Sir Rodney Redblood was a two-year-old winner in a nursery at Kempton two years ago. And time test, it's his first crop. And he's had a really good start with Tardis, who won the uh, St. Hughes Stakes at Newbury last Saturday. So I know it's a big price. I know it's not necessarily a yard that trains newcomers, but of the newcomers in the paddock, he was quite tall, quite, quite scopy. I mean, he probably will need a little bit of time to come on, but I thought he was one of the more imposing uh, horses that we've seen physically here. OK, then, that's a look at one or two of them down at the starting point. Won't be too long now before they uh, start the load for this second race at Kempton. Time to get back uh, to the track once again. Rejoin Alex. Thanks, Mark. The, the market's slightly lopsided now, isn't it, in favour of Tamras Rock? He, he was the one for me. I thought that was such a good platform effort here two weeks ago. And the way he, he was just slightly on and off the bridle through the first quarter of the race uh, and then better in the second half suggested that he was learning as he went along. And the fact they took the, the hood off he wore that first time obviously you saw him with the red hood on during the preliminaries and they've taken that off down at the start so that suggests that hopefully he he has come forward and um, certainly that looked a really good platform run but i think in in form terms there's probably not that much to choose between him and al hebri you could argue the newbury race al hebri ran on debut is better on balance the number of above average horses that were in there and two of them significantly so. Uh, one placed in, in Group 3 company in France and the other rated in the 90s. So, so on balance, El Hibri's probably the wrong price of the two, even although I, I think Tamra, Tam, Tamra's Rock is the, is the tip, if you like. Stall numbers, six for El Hibri and two for Tamra's Rock. Um, there's number four, Al... Modavar del Rio. I think he was getting a bit excited in the paddock and he's slightly on his toes leaving the walkway too. So just keep an eye on him. He's, he's going to be next door to Tamra's Rock. So you, you don't want any of that to spill over 
in the way of the favourite. There's Petit Joe, who I, I just mentioned beforehand, Ben James. I think this will be his first two-year-old runner um, running in the same colours as our, our first race winner. And hopefully we'll try and grab a word with, with Ben after this if we can. Actually, see how things are going for him. Just uh, starting out, and, and Michelle Crook's already had a winner. There's a Justice Protocol on the far side. He only cost three grand, I think, from the Goff's yearling a sales. But Ishmael Mohammed centred a couple of two-year-old winners. And the yard really are going well at the moment. Zane Claudette, of course. Uh, winning the Princess Margaret at uh, Ascot, flying the flag for them among the juveniles. Justice Protocol does have a pedigree that I think seven furlongs is the starting point. He, he's got a sprinter in there, but eight, ten, twelve furlong horse, and that, that horse went hurdling too. So he is related to seven winners. On balance, it's mile plus pedigree for this son of time test. Stall 11, he's already gone in. It'll be stall five for Petit Joe. And in terms of those who've shown form otherwise, Hero the Track is, is the only one who's come close to placing. And he was beaten out of sight, um, double digits, 12 lengths at Wolverhampton. He was 200 to 1 that day. And the form wouldn't match up to the top two. The third horse ahead of him there rated 70 and the, the fifth horse rated 65. So that leaves him with a fair bit to, to find on the top two, who really do stand out, uh, unless... There's something among the newcomers, and I think James Ferguson, Zach Sopar is the one who kind of leaps off the page. Good draw in one, and the stable tri strike rate is, is about one in three with the two-year-olds this season. Still trying to get Petit Joe to, to go forward, and he, he's definitely going to be a work in progress, isn't he? I mean, he's by Champs Elysees, stamina influences. He's got two mile and a halfers in his pedigree as well, but they'll just be hoping. Mark, as we, we check on the betting, that uh, they can actually start his career tonight because that, that looks in doubt now. It does indeed. He might get one more go, but he hasn't gone in yet to store five Petit Joe, so let's hope that they can get him in. Um, there are a couple of others here who have got a little bit of form or at least have seen a race course. One of them would be um, a horse called Love You Mum, but didn't show a great deal for Michael Atwater. That one's never seen the all-weather before, neither has Strawberry Loader. Has there anything that's previously run got anything that's given you a glimmer of hope so far, Rachel? Yeah, a horse who finished stone bonking last on her only start to date, Chickador. The 11 horse, a 50 to 1 shot, drifting out, but that's all right. For a Kevin Philippa Defoy, went off at 13 to 2, uh, was slow away, absolutely ducked out, hung right, but she actually travelled really well for a good chunk of that race just before falling out the back of the TV when ease. And I just, I just think if we put a line through that first run, she might have shown enough that she might be slightly overpriced at the at the big at the big at the big prices. But being a, a daughter of decorated night, um, the all weather should not be an issue. Uh, she'll come out of store number fourteen, so she is drawn on the wide outside. Maybe not for tonight, but one maybe to keep an eye on. Then not quite as bad a run possibly as that first debut last would suggest for a Chiquador number 11 with Laura Pearson in the saddle. They are still working on getting Petit Joe into the stores. Here at the track is another one they are still trying to get into the stores. Fourth of nine on debut here at the track representing uh, Mark Usher, Ali McKenzie aboard, beaten 12 lengths that day and that was at Wolverhampton. A, a glimmer of a glimmer of ability. Well, just remember that was that was at Wolverhampton. It was a seven furlong race. He was drawn in ten, so in that shoot he was fanned about eighty-seven wide going into the first sort of half dog leg. He was outpaced before staying on into fourth. The winner, Power of Beauty, has won against since at Yarmouth, and this is a this is a family that Mark Usher knows extremely well. Three of the horse's siblings were trained by him. There, there's a lot of all weather. There's a lot of two-year-olds, multiple winners, etc. I actually just think if Ellie McKenzie can get him a little bit better positioned early on, uh, he'll he should be closer in the. I know he finished fourth, but he was beaten 12 lengths. But um, the winner won by eight, so that's a little bit of a. That, mm. that was a little bit of a iffy. You know, basically was third of the main body, not beaten very far. Exactly. But, yeah. Take the winner out. Yeah. He's not beaten very far at all. No. No. Exactly. They did give Petit Joe another go. Didn't go in. Well, just remember, they gave Just Amber in the previous race a whole lot of starts, and then she went and finished third. So, who knows? The next one to go forward is Fast Danseurs with Neil Callan has gone in. Tamara's Rock, the favourite, now about to take 
his place to go forward into stall number two. The others that are in are hopefully pretty quiet. After Tamra's Rock, only a couple of others. One of them on the outside is uh, Chiquador. So let's go across to Kempton because they might go here without Petit Joe's. Let's go across and join Alan uh, for the commentary. Thanks, Mark. Well, they've put the, the blindfold on Petit Joe now. That's going to give him one final chance. So Hibri is the other one. We wait on there down at the seven furlong start. So they try once again with Petit Joe, this time with the blindfold on. Hopefully this will do the trick. As he goes up to stall number five, hopefully he walks straight in. And he goes. So Petit Joe's in, one to load. Hal Hibri. In the Shadwell Silks, so due up in at stall six under Dean O'Neill. Last time moving forward now. Now Hibri's in, they're set to go. And they're off. A little bit green there coming out of the stall, Surrey Territories. Also a little bit slowly way Petit Joe gave issues loading for this, the Racing TV.com EBF restricted knob stakes over the seven furlongs. El Hibri is the first one to show from Axa Par and El Modavaldo Rio in the yellow. Then here at the track in the blue and white silks, four deep, followed then by the well back favourite Tamra's Rock in the black and pink silks. Behind Tamra's Rock, then is Chicador in the light green and purple diamonds. Then Fast Answers and Strawberry Lola from Justice Protocol and Bura back and then Love You Mum and Reel Em In. Surrey Territories and Petit Joe, the back two, are about to make the way out of the back straight towards halfway. El Hibri leading a length and a half to our Modavar del Rio who runs in second, Axapar in third then here at the track in Tamra's Rock who is handily positioned just in behind the gallop, next is Fast Star Sirs in the pink and then Strawberry Lola followed by Chikador and Bura back wider out in the black jacket, they race now towards the cutaway point inside the final two and a half, El Hibri's got the lead, El Modavar del Rio racing in second, Axapar in third, here comes Tamra's Rock down the centre with a big looking effort, they race inside the final furlong and a half, Tamra's Tamra's Rock now on terms at El Hibri. They're pulling clear from Fast Dancers and El Modaval del Rio. Tamra's Rock got to the lead from El Hibri. And as they head up towards the line, it's Tamra's Rock now by a couple of lengths to get off the mark at the second try. Tamra's Rock under Ross Ryan beats El Hibri. Here at the track has raced in third at the line. Fast Dancers in fourth. And then Axapar. Strong performance that uh, second time up on the back of a promising debut run from Tamra's Rock, who has justified a short price and in the end runs out a ready winner by two to three lengths from El Hibri, who got a nice run through. He was last to go in, slightly reluctant, but he got the run of the race from a good position. No complaints there at all for El Hibri's team. The Tamra's Rock was just better and stronger in the closing stages. And the pleasing thing would be how well he's gone through the race, how relaxed he was in and amongst horses. Obviously, the hood came off today compared to last time. He wore the red hood in the preliminaries. That did its job because he was fine and smooth all the way through that. And then he's strong in the final quarter. So he has ticked every single box tonight. It's already decent form. Bumped into an 83 horse on, on debut, and I think he may well have improved on that by a fair bit tonight to justify favouritism. Beating Al Hebri, who's, who's got solid enough form in the book himself, and they've come well clear of anything else. I'd say the third... Two or three from the right, a picture in the blue and white here of the track has taken a, a sizable step forward. He's been beaten a, a fair way by the top two, but he was only just ahead of a 65 horse last time, so it would appear that he's taken a step forward and he's going on in the closing stage.